At this time, let's turn our attention to lung cancer. Our CRI expert will focus on several recently approved lung cancer immunotherapy options and how treatment is advancing toward overcoming this challenging disease. Let's hear more. My name is Tom Marin, and I'm an immunologist and a thoracic medical oncologist at Mount Sinai in New York City. And I'm also the director of the Early Phase Trials Unit, where we run lots of clinical trials looking at novel immunotherapies and novel combination approaches for the treatment of many cancers, but in particular, I'm interested in lung cancer. And lung cancer is one of the, or it is the most deadly cancer. It's one of the most common cancers and the most deadly cancer in both men and women, um, despite a lot of the new advances. But thanks to cancer immunotherapy, specifically checkpoint blockade, we really have revolutionized the way in which we treat lung cancer, both early stage lung cancer and also metastatic lung cancer. And with the inclusion of immunotherapy into the treatment paradigm, patients are now living more than twice as long as they used to. The average lifespan for a patient who's diagnosed with metastatic lung cancer at this point is nearly two years, while before immunotherapy it was less than one year. So we've really made amazing advances, but the reality is that unfortunately most patients don't actually respond to immunotherapy or they may initially respond and then they initially they eventually will go on to progress and so they need new treatment options and that's really where a lot of the research that we're working on is focused is identifying new ways in which we can use the immune system to attack cancer. So immunotherapy is really a broad umbrella term for any sort of medicine that uses the immune system or harnesses the immune system uh, to do our work for us and recognize and kill cancer. And your immune system is in your body to tell the difference between foreign things like COVID and normal things like your lung. And your cancer is somewhere in between there. It doesn't look quite as foreign as COVID, but you were not born with cancer. And so therefore cancer is by nature something foreign that your immune system should recognize and attack. What happens though is that cancer puts up lots of stop signs and it really hijacks your immune system keeping your immune system from doing its job and recognizing and killing cancer. And so all the immunotherapy approaches that we are studying and the ones that we currently use in clinic are all about tearing down those stop signs and also teaching your immune system to recognize and see your cancer the same way that vaccines have taught our immune system to recognize and see COVID. So that's a lot of the, the research that we're doing right now to try to advance things. Because like I said, you know, most patients, if they are diagnosed with metastatic lung cancer, they will receive immunotherapy if they don't have a, a specific mutation that we can target with a targeted therapy. And they'll either get immunotherapy at the beginning um, with or without chemotherapy, but uh, most people will progress. And when they progress, we really don't have very good options to treat them. And so that's why we're doing clinical trials to try to find new ways to overcome the resistance that cancer develops to the immune therapies that we're using. And here at Sinai, we're doing a lot of research to try to understand the complexity of why the immune system doesn't do its job in everyone and why the majority of patients eventually will die from lung cancer. And a lot of our work really revolves around early stage lung cancer uh, because this is a stage where, you know, hopefully we can cure patients. But unfortunately, despite uh, surgery and also using, you know, uh, chemotherapy and radiation, which we occasionally will use in the early stage setting, you know, most patients, the cancer will come back and, and eventually take their lives. In early stage lung cancer, so these are patients where the lung cancer hasn't spread to other parts of their body, it's now commonplace uh, practice to use immunotherapy, um, oftentimes with chemotherapy, either before or after surgery. And this is significantly improving outcomes for patients. We've been doing a lot of work to better understand what the immune system looks like inside the tumor. So if you take out a tumor and you look at it under a microscope, the interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize is that sometimes even the majority of the cells, if not just a, a large minority of cells, are actually immune cells. They're not cancer cells themselves. And lots of these immune cells you know, are potentially recognizing cancer and just not doing their job. But also there's lots of immune cells there that are what I like to call bad guys. You know, they really have been hijacked by the uh, tumor and they really are suppressing the other immune cells' ability to do their job. And so what we do a lot of uh, work on is we try to study these immune cells and figure out how we can either get rid of the bad guys, get rid of the bad players that are really turning your immune system off, or potentially retrain them. So, you know, half the immune cells in your tumor are what we call macrophages, which are typically uh, thought of as the janitor cells of the immune system, but also very important cells in, in priming and teaching your immune system to recognize 
uh, cancer. But in the tumor, most of those macrophages are very immunosuppressive. They really turn the immune system off. Uh, they're oftentimes referred to as TAMs or tumor-associated macrophages, or sometimes they're lumped together in a population called myeloid-derived suppressor cells, or MDSCs. And these are a target of many of the exciting therapies that are being developed right now to combine with checkpoint blockade to overcome some of the resistance that is, is developed in the majority of our patients. <clears throat> so we're doing a lot of work to you know, take tumors. We take them out of uh, the, the patient in the operating room across the street. We run them over here to the lab. Uh, and then we, we take a look using a variety of very uh, cutting edge technologies that are supported by grants like those from the Cancer Research Institute. And we can take those immune cells and, and study them in depth and figure out how it is that they're suppressing the immune system's ability to recognize and kill cancer. And then we can study in the lab, both in you know, a petri dish using human samples, but also in preclinical models like mouse models, we can figure out how we can overcome those mechanisms that are being utilized by lung cancer. And the reality is that lung cancer is not just one illness, it's thousands of different illnesses. Everybody who comes and sees me in my lung cancer clinic has a completely different disease and they have a completely different immune system that has seen different viruses and bacteria throughout their life. And because of that, we're never going to have a one-size-fits-all immunotherapy treatment for patients, but we are slowly moving to a world in which we will have a more personalized approach where eventually we can take somebody's tumor and as a biopsy and we can potentially take their blood and we can identify the optimal therapeutic approach for those patients. And thanks to the help of a, a grant from the Cancer Research Institute, we're actually opening a second trial where we're looking at this combination of cancer immunotherapy and uh, allergy immunotherapy together, specifically in early stage lung cancer. So these are patients who have um, typically stage one disease, which those patients normally wouldn't get chemotherapy or immunotherapy. But we know, unfortunately, 35% of those patients are going to go on to have their cancer come back. Typically, at that point, it'll be metastatic, and that is you know, a life-ending diagnosis at that point. And so our goal is to really increase the likelihood that surgery is able to cure these patients while also using funds from that grant, we'll be able to study what's happening when we take that tumor out in the tumor so that we can better identify which patients are going to respond well to therapies like this and identify which patients we should really be trying different therapies in. Because like I said, Everyone's lung cancer is completely different, and within the next 10 years, we're really going to be moving towards a more personalized approach where we'll be identifying up front which patients are going to respond best to which therapy so that we never treat a patient with a therapy where it's just going to be a futile effort and they're going to have all the side effects without the benefits of that therapy. So I think that this is going to be a super promising next step. I'll say, you know, as a, as a doctor who leads a phase one program, and I'm, I'm constantly taking new medicines out of the laboratory, out of the mice and monkeys and putting them into humans, there's lots of extremely exciting uh, advances that are coming. So even though right now, you know, with patients with lung cancer, we're only curing maybe 15 to 20 percent of them with immunotherapy, which you know, 10 years ago, we weren't curing any of them. So we've already made a huge step forward. My goal is obviously, you know, I want to retire because nobody else has lung cancer anymore. And so we got to get that 15 to 20% number up to 100%. And there's lots of super exciting therapies, particularly therapies that target those macrophages and the myeloid cells that make up the majority of the immune cells in the tumor that I think are really going to um, change the way we practice medicine. So hopefully 20 years from now, when we do another one of these conversations, we'll have really no patients that don't have a good option. I, for patients who have a new diagnosis of lung cancer, I think one of the most important things is, is reaching out and finding a lung cancer expert. Um, many of my colleagues in oncology, they treat all things, but I think that when you have a diagnosis, particularly of metastatic disease, where this is a cancer that most likely will eventually take your life, you want to be with a doctor who is an expert in the field of lung cancer and knows all the cutting edge data and all the new therapies that are coming out. Additionally, you should always feel comfortable asking for a second opinion or even a third opinion for two different reasons. Uh, up front, it's always good to make sure that, you know, the advice you're getting from the first doctor that you see correlates with the advice from the second doctor. Typically it does, but it's always reassuring to the patient and the family that you are making the right decision with the treatment that you're uh, pursuing. It's also always a good idea to meet lots of doctors because if 
eventually the immunotherapy that you're receiving stops working, you're going to want to pursue potentially a clinical trial. And every institution has different clinical trials available. And those availabilities, you know, in my program, for instance, will change from week to week. So it's good to know as many doctors as possible so that you'll have as many options as possible for treatment. And you'll have as many, you know, smart people looking at your situation and, and giving you advice on, on what sort of therapies to pursue.